Hello. Make another video today. Um, I'm actually doing a, a review on the. Uh, I have to show the, the wrapper. Um, uh, Xiaomu Shangtai uh, Jingu uh, White Dragon Tea Factory. And this is fairly new to Yunnan sourcing. Um, I'm gonna hold it this way. I don't know if that's up or down, but you'll be able to see the. It's got like the dragon thing on the front. Uh, it's bug bitten. The wrapper. I always thought it had something to do with the, the heat and the humidity that causes the bugs, but apparently it has to do with if it's been aged in bamboo. That's what I was just recently um, informed. So. Um, yeah, I guess the, the termites, they like to eat the bamboo and then they'll also eat the, the, the paper as a result of being in the bamboo. But, uh, anyways, that's the cake. This is a 2003, um, I think it's, it was Guangdong stored until just in March, uh, 2019. So, Uh, I think what Guangdong storage is usually fairly fairly humid. I think I don't know. Um, yeah, this is a really good tea. Actually, one of my favorites. Um, after getting it, I was really excited to get it and um, move some of this tea here. It was actually uh, recommended that I do a comparison video using porcelain and clay. Uh, I was told Yixing clay. So I was told when I bought this teapot that it was uh, Yixing uh, Juni that's what I was told and so I don't know it looks like it was handmade like it's got like the, the scraping marks on the inside of the, the teapot meaning that somebody would have to get in there with a tool to shape it out and stuff like that so it's it looks like a handmade uh, clay um, anyways I got eight grams of the of that in here. This is a 120 milliliter pot. And I got four grams in here. So that's a 60 milliliter jar one. So that's the same proportions anyways, I guess. And uh, yeah, I can come in water hot here. So yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, I will give everything a quick, quick wash. Do it like that. It's the same tea. Why not? I don't like wasting my hot water. This is almost too much tea for me to drink by myself. So what I'll probably end up doing is putting all the leaf into a big teapot. I'll have it for after work. Just, just gonna get everything a little bit of a rinse here. Um, yeah, I really like this tea. All my friends like this tea. It was funny because I, I shared it with my sister, and uh, maybe she just doesn't understand poor or what. But uh, her daughter also drank it. She's very young and she didn't say anything like this, but my sister mentioned that this tea, she didn't want to drink it. She she smelt it and she said that it smells like like rotting fish. And I'm like, I don't, I don't know how you get that. No, I asked all my friends and none of them say anything like rotting fish. I think her taste buds and just her smellers just messed up. So I ended up making her coffee and she's more of a coffee person. So yeah, this is really, Really strong smelling. Uh... Oh, it's like uh... I don't even know how to describe it. Like raisins. That's what I'm getting. Like like raisins and grapes. This one smells quite a bit different, but this is a fairly seasoned pot, so it's just it's gonna smell and a little bit different than each other. So I'll do my first steep here. Of uh, a little bit. And I'll 
steep this one too. Yeah, somebody recommended that I do a comparison between porcelain and uh, yixing clay. And uh, I figured actually this tea would probably be the best to do that with. Because this one does have like a, it's a very strong like aged flavor, right? Like it's, um, I don't know if you've ever tried the, the Pasha Mountain Gushu, 2006 Pasha Mountain Gushu from Yan Sourcing. This one's very similar. Except they're completely different in a lot of ways, right? But it has that, uh, I don't want to say like, um, that humid flavor, humid stored flavor. Because I've only tried two teas that were considered a, like a more humid storage, right? But this one does have like a bit of like a like a mustiness. It's like it's not strong, but it's there. Um, it's behind all like the, the very fruitiness of it. It's got a, a quite a bit of bitterness still. It's a powerful tea. Um, it could definitely uh, benefit from a few more years of, of storage. So I would like to note that like, um, I think it, it's, it's, it's a lot different personally because I brewed it in both, but let's see. Definitely like a brighter taste coming from the, uh, the, por uh, the porcelain and uh, a little bit of that, that mustiness maybe is not quite as rounded off. I don't know. Go back to this one. There's no way I'm going to be able to drink. Finish these leaves off. That's a lot of tea. Definitely with this, bring it in the porcelain, it was, it was brighter. So more of those brighter notes, but not as many, uh, the complexities that I'm getting from the clay. That might also be because my, my clay is like fairly seasoned and I've been using it for like every day for, you know, like I think since August I bought it, but two or two, one or two sessions to, to even three sessions a day. Like the inside of the pot is starting to get like black. It's starting to season very nicely. And I haven't like left moisture in it. I always clean the leaves out, wash it with cold water and put it upside down. Uh, sometimes what I'll do is I'll even, uh, I'll just knock the leaves out of it and then put it upside down and let it la naturally dry. So all, like the, the, the tea nice like dries to the clay, right? And I think that really helps to season it. But, uh, and then after it dries, then I would rinse it out with cold water, but yeah, definitely rounder and more balanced. Like it's not like it doesn't have those brighter, uh, like those those bright bright notes. I don't know how to describe the, the bright notes. It's like a tingling on the tip of your tongue, like very, I don't know, bright floral. I don't know. I think uh, I've noticed that uh, with clay. With this, with this pot anyways, like uh, brewing something like uh, the Hebian Jai. Uh, that one's very, very bright, very floral, very viscous and sweet. Um, I lose a lot of those, uh, those notes that I like from it a lot. And uh, so I think a lot of the younger teas, I'm, I'm gonna say, are better in porcelain. And that's just my, from my own experience of brewing. I don't have treats for you. I don't have treats for you. I'll have to get you some treats. Sorry. Um, I'm going to get get some treats. He won't stop bugging me if I don't. He sees me sitting at the table and he thinks I have something for him. Got to sit. 
Good boy. No, you gotta sit. No, you gotta sit. Good boy. Hey, where was I? Yeah, so like, um, definitely like uh, new, new tea, young tea, um, really benefits from porcelain. And, uh, I just, I notice I get a lot more of the complexities. And I think with the older, older tea, I've noticed that I get more of the complexities from brewing it in clay. I'm just going to put that like that and then I'll try this. And a lot of those unwanted notes, like the, like some people would consider unwanted. I like them, the musty, mossy, earthy flavors. And um, the only time I've tried, I, I, I've tasted those flavors is in this tea and in the Passion Mountain. And then they're the only aged teas that I've tried that actually have like a, that were like a, a Guangdong storage or whatever they were considered. And they, they both also had like the, the, the wet stains on the, on the wrappers. Like you, you knew, you know that it's been in a humid environment just because of the stains on the wrapper. As well as the bug bites, you know, it's got the bug bites and I was told that doesn't have maybe to do with the, uh, um, humidity and the heat, but more to do with just aging in bamboo. Um, Pete, you sit. Good boy. Um, let's try this one. So I think that the deeper notes, yeah, with the, with the, with the clay, definitely a lot of the, the deeper, um, the deeperness of it, I'm dumping some of it out. I'm not going to be able to drink it all anyways. Yeah, and it's, it seems like it's flat coming from, coming from the porcelain. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. You got to sit down. You got to sit. No, sit. Good boy. I got to get him some like uh, dentist sticks. You know, like the chewy rawhide ones. Um... Definitely getting a lot more sweetness, um, stuff like that, from uh, the clay. Um, it just seems, for me, it seems more more complex, more, uh, I don't know, full-bodied, I guess you'd say. You gonna sit? Good boy. Try the porcelain again, anyways. Yeah, anyway, yeah, this was, uh, when I first tried this tea, I was in a, I was in an AA meeting. I go to AA meetings. It's always part, part of my, like, sobriety and stuff like that. I'm, like, close to four years clean and sober. But I went to an AA meeting, and I brought this little, little pot here. And, uh, and just, like, a, like, a tall cup. And my big, uh, thermos full of hot water, right? And I just brewed tea and poured it into my, my mug or whatever, and, I tried it and the flavor just like it really really hit me. It was really like a it really wowed me. And it's not often that teas wow me anymore. Um I found a lot of aged teas, they taste generally similar. They have like that aged flavor. Um some of them don't have much flavor. And uh this one really has like it has like an intense flavor. It's 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 still got quite a bit of bitterness, it's still got lots of uh drying. Uh drying like astringency and uh, like it's got that mossiness like it's like a mustiness that some people might actually get turned off by that but I, I enjoy it um, but uh, the clay almost rounds that mustiness off 
and I never really actually noticed it until I brewed it in. Uh, like you notice in the smell when you smell it, it's got like that. I don't know, just smell. But uh, maybe that's what people are talking about that humid storage, um, the humid storage uh, smell. But uh, no, actually, I got really, uh, I got really. Uh, um, I got a lot of energy from it when I was in that AA meeting and I almost felt like anxious, like uncomfortable from drinking it. Like it had a strong, uh, strong chachi. Um, I think my first impression was was so good because I did I did I brewed it I brewed it in uh, this this pot here and I remember watching a video on uh, YouTube and it was the same kind of thing it was like um, clay versus porcelain versus glass all that kind of stuff Pete you sit no more and, uh, you know, I kind of thought it was kind of like, like bullshit a little bit, excuse my language, but, uh, I never really could understand. But I think the biggest part of it is like the heat retention of, of, of everything. It maybe has something to do with the porosity of the, of the, uh, the clay. But, um, yeah, this, this tea doesn't taste very good in porcelain. I'll just say that right now. It's like, it loses a lot of those. Those notes that I originally really got from it, really enjoyed from it. Yeah, this tea is just really, really enjoyable. It's really thick and red, and it's just, uh, it's powerful too. Um, Yeah, like the, the the dried fruit, like like uh, like raisins, prunes, those kind of things. I have no more. You go lay down. I have no more. It's all gone. All gone. Um. Super enjoyable. No, it reminds me a lot. Like uh, um, has a lot of the same like multi flavors that like uh. A nice red tea would have like almost like uh, maybe like uh, the pure bud black tea of Simao or uh, what was the other one like Jin Jin Mei it has like that that maltiness kind of like Jin Jin Mei like that malty sweetness of it and uh, Yeah, I've drinking like so much tea already. I'm gonna set this one aside. I'm just gonna say right now, I think my opinion, brew your aged teas in clay and brew your young teas in porcelain or maybe even glass. Um, I think they just they just taste better that way. I'm not gonna drink any more of the guy one. I'm gonna over, I'm gonna, I don't wanna drink too much tea. Um, but yeah, I'll keep drinking this here. I'm not sure how many steeps I've got. It's hard to count when you got two two things going. But I'm starting to get like fairly uh, fairly tea drunk from from this. It's a strong tea, and uh, be interesting to know what this tea was like when it was like brand new, because like it's uh, it's aggressive now, right? So it must have been, uh, it must have been like super aggressive, maybe even undrinkable when it was first first picked, right? Because it's still got lots of bitterness, lots of lots of intense flavor. Um, that's what I like in an aged aged uh, pour. 
I like the uh, the intensity of the, the flavor. Um, and my first ever uh, my first impression of, of aged poor was the Passion Mountain Gushu, and that's kind of what I've like looked for in a, in a poor every time I buy an aged one, and it never has that same kind of flavor. I think that's the difference between. Okay, no more. You're scratching. You gotta stay down. Um, I have nothing. Oh, I have one more. That's it. You gotta sit down. This doesn't leave me alone. My little puppy, he's getting big. Um, I don't even know what I was saying. But yeah, no, the, the Pasha Mountain Gushu, that was my first impression of a of an aged uh, poor, and uh, you know, at first I didn't know what to kind of think of it. Uh, I started to really enjoy that one, and I drank it really quickly. And uh, it's actually one of the first first teas that I've, I've, I got. Right, like I, I bought the uh, the uh, 2017 uh, impression from Yunnan Sourcing, um, the Man Hong 2014. Um, no more, no more. I got the uh, Year of the Dog Blue Label, uh, the um, Purple Green Mark, Purple Green Mark from the uh, Wild Purple Green Mark from the. the oh. Commune on sourcing. See, I got no more. No more. Uh, and there's a white tea that I got from Amazon, like a white pour, and I still have some of that. And it's 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 fairly good. I, a lot of everybody that I, I I serve it to, they really enjoy it. But for me, it just like it hurts my stomach. It gives me acid reflux. Um, the first time I broke into it, I had, I had like hairs and pieces of tarp in it. There was like some of that like red string that you would see like on like like Chinese kind of tassel things that would be on like some kind of lucky thing. <laughs> I don't know. You know what I mean? But uh um yeah I still have probably well just a little bit over a quarter left for that cake. And that was one of the first like tea cakes that I ever bought. Um so that's just a good idea of like the cakes that I still have, those are the ones I definitely didn't like as much because a lot of the stuff that I first bought um, you know I, I really enjoyed them and I, it took me about a month to drink them right and uh, I wasn't working as much I was going to school um, Pete you stay down maybe he thinks I'm talking to him or something he's wondering what's wrong with me I'm sit, sta sitting here talking to the talking to the phone but, uh, yeah, so I'd buy like maybe two cakes and I here or there, and then I would drink them and then I'd buy more. And I had a collection of about seven cakes and I was planning on expanding on that. I was hoping to keep everything that I bought and not drink all of it. And, uh, with, uh, that's hot. Uh, with going to school and not buying more, it just eventually got to the point where it's like, okay, I, I ran out of tea. And I started drinking the uh, um, the purple green mark, the wild purple green marks. I never liked that very much when I first got it. I started drinking that because I didn't have anything else. And I started drinking that white tea again because I didn't have anything else. And uh, I actually started getting, uh, I had some green tea and some black tea that I bought from the bakery in town here. Very low quality. It wasn't bad, but it was like, it was something to drink, right? Because I didn't have any anything. But uh, eventually I just started drinking coffee for like the longest time because I just couldn't afford drinking tea. And then I, I finished my schooling and got this job, right? So I was like, okay, I'm going to start collecting again, right? And I think I like collecting just as much as I like, uh, um, like, like drinking it, right? Just the idea is like, okay, I have this tea, right? And if I only drink it once... Uh, once a month or even, you know what I mean? 
even less than that, and then you know you'll always have that tea, right? And if you're always adding to your collection, you know you're you never finish all your all of one cake, right? And the ones that I really like, like I want to, I do want to stock up on some of those, right? And I actually planned on stocking up on the the 2017 uh, impression. I really like that one, and I just I don't know, it sold out. I want to make a, make an order of a couple more cakes, and I was planning as like, okay, my next order, I'm gonna buy a couple tongs because I can afford it. And I got an email back like, hey, sorry, it's sold out. So, uh, yeah. Anyways, don't really know what else to say here. This um, this tea is really strong. It has a, it's definitely very fairly aggressive. I highly recommend getting this one. I paid like, I was 118 Canadian um, from UnitedSourcing.com. And uh, I don't usually buy samples. Maybe I should buy samples when you're spending over 100 bucks on a, on a tea cake. Maybe you don't like it, I don't know. I've never not liked something that I bought from United Sourcing. Actually, I've never really not liked any of the raw pour that I buy. Maybe I've just lucked out because I've heard of people buying stuff that smells like wet socks. I definitely don't want to drink wet, dirty sock tea. But, um, yeah, I don't know. This one's really good. Definitely buy it. Um, I won't be making any more purchases until way after Christmas, just because Christmas is coming and I gotta buy some. I don't know. My kid's Christmas list has, like, uh, right on the top it says toys, and then it says GoPro. And then it says VR. He wants VR, but he already had like the, the when you put the cell phone in. He doesn't like that. He wants the one that goes like the PlayStation VR or uh, like yeah, they're a bit expensive, right? So VR hoverboard. Right underneath hoverboard, he wants one million dollars. He put it right on his thing. And I was like, yeah, I don't think uh, I don't think Santa uh, gives kids one million dollars or any money. That's that's for sure. He might get you the VR, as I said. <laughs> so we'll see. Either Santa will get it or I'll get it. We'll see. Um, I gotta take a break from this. This is this tea is almost like it's 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 like uh, overwhelming. That's that's what I found the the energy to be. It's almost overwhelming. It's strong. Um. If you like strong energy tea, uh, this one's actually a little bit hard on the stomach too. Like it's, it's, it's still like has some bitterness to it, but it's it's definitely got like that rounded off aged flavor and uh, like a little bit of like a mustiness to it, right? And that might be for you, might not be. I really enjoy it. This is I definitely recommend it. Get a sample or whatever. Um, if you do that, I don't buy samples. I kind of think that cakes are samples. You buy a cake, it's a sample to buy like a tong or a case. Although I can't really afford tongs or cases, so maybe my uh, my my logic, my reasoning is just kind of off the left field. So yeah. Anyways, uh, yeah, I think I'm gonna cut this video off. Um, this will be my last steep. This this tea steeps steeps many times. Like I think in the meeting I was at, I brought this pot. I brought this um, my thermos. This holds two liters of water, put boiling water in it. It keeps it hot for a long time. But I used the whole thermos full in the meeting. Um, and in about an hour, steeping. And uh, I'm not sure how many steeps that would have been. But I've counted with this, this tea before and I've got like, like over, over 15 before I've quit. I think even like over 15 before like the, the flavor stopped like really dropping off. Cause it starts dropping off but it turns into something different, right? It's not just like, okay, it's like now I'm drinking hot water flavored tea, right? With like that has color. It, has, it just tastes like something else, right? It's, it's good. It's definitely very, uh, very steepable, if that's a word. Or, uh, yeah.
yeah, anyways, yeah, if you like the videos and, uh, yeah, press the like button. But, yeah, even better, you could like, subscribe or whatever. But, um, yeah, if you don't like the videos, and definitely dislike the video and unsubscribe. Turn the notifications off. <laughs> Just kidding. Anyways, yeah, thanks.